Today is December 14th, 2012, and as most of you may know, The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, hit theaters at midnight today. Or does it mean midnight last night? Or is it midnight today? I don't know, who knows, but... <laughs> okay. My cousin Caius and I have been planning this for like two years, at least, since we heard it was going to be a movie. I mean, he showed me the Lord of the Rings movies, and then I read the books, starting with The Hobbit. And then when I saw the production blogs on The Hobbit afterwards, um, excitement grew. I showed them to him. We both got well excited over the last couple of years, and now we finally got to see it. You asked me to find the 14th member of this company, and I have chosen Mr. Packers. Me? No, 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 no. Hobbits can pass unseen by most if they choose, which gives us a distinct advantage. We will seize this chance to take back Erebor! Yeah. Here, Mr. Bilbo, where are you off to? I'm going on an adventure! Mithrandir, why the halfling? Why Bilbo Baggins? Perhaps it is because I'm afraid. And it gives me courage. So this is your purpose, to enter the mountain? What of it? There are some who would not deem it wise. A dark part has found a way back into the world. Why don't we have a game of riddles? And if it loses, what right then? Well, it loses precious thing, we eat it. <laughs> if Baggins loses, we eat it whole. Fair enough. I will take each and every one of these dwarves over the mightiest army. Loyalty. Honor. A willing heart. I can ask no more than that. Home is now behind you. The world is ahead. I'll try not to give too many details for the sake of those who haven't seen it, but I will give some of the, um, the really good ones. The ones that might come as no surprise, but won't be, like, spoilers. I think the first thing on our list was just getting our tickets, because we figured there would be a line or something, and we figured we should get our tickets early so we wouldn't have to wait in line for, I don't know, ever. So we just went and got our candy, and then we're basically just sprinting back to where we were. Oh yeah, and there was one thing that was a huge surprise. There was hardly anybody in that auditorium. And I think I get why, because there were three posters of The Hobbit when we got there, so that means it was playing on three screens. And that includes the Big D Theater, which is... I don't know if it's in very many theaters, but it's this huge auditorium at this Carmike nearby in Pottsgrove. And they were showing it in 3D in there, so I bet most of the huge fans went to see it in there because they wanted to see it in 3D. I originally wanted to see it in 3D too, but um, KS Wars Glasses didn't want to see it in 3D, and that's fine with me. But I want to see it in 3D at least once at some point. So basically today we saw it in 2D, and um, it wasn't crowded at all. No, there were maybe, I don't know, six people in there, give or take a few. And um, so we actually had like the whole left side of the theater to ourselves. Well, it being just the first part of this Hobbit trilogy, um, I didn't expect much to go like at a quick pace like it does in the book. If you read the book, then you probably know that a lot of the major events only take place through a couple of pages. And to add a lot of the stuff that was in the appendices of The Lord of the Rings and keep it true to the book, then you kind of got to expand a little bit just to have it make more sense. Do you know what I mean? Because then some stuff just might like, it might seem like it's just popping out of nowhere otherwise. And it came out really good for the most part. It did stay really close to the book with just a different kind of twist and spin on a few things, but 
a lot of the major details were the same. In fact, um, one of my favorite parts of this movie, and definitely one of my all-time favorite parts of the book, is the, um, the, the scene when Bilbo and the dwarves have this encounter with three trolls. Are there any more of you little fellas hiding where you shouldn't? That was great, and the trolls were really funny. They were like this, um, dysfunctional group. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were such jerks to each other about, they were arguing so much, of course, and just being kind of stupid. Yeah, I think that would probably be the best word for it because, well, they're trolls. Definitely another one of my all-time favorite parts is that's what Bilbo Baggins hates. Of course, that's what it is in the book when um, all the dwarves are around Bilbo's table and kind of getting rowdy and he's getting all nervous about what they're going to do in his kitchen. Well, um, they kept that part in the movie, of course, and the song is called Blunt the Knives. And, um, oh my god, it was great. It was really funny. And Misty Mountain's Cold, that was definitely great. That was like a really sort of deep, low, soothing dwarf song. I'm really looking forward to the second movie, the Desolation of Smog, because I have a feeling that the second one's going to be my favorite, because, frankly, most of my favorite parts in The Hobbit were um, the stuff involving Mirkwood, um, Smog's Lair, definitely Smog's Lair, when Bilbo's chatting him up and trying to just, you know, take him off his guard, something like that. That's definitely, like, my favorite part of the book. And I cannot wait to see that on the big screen. Most movie theaters around here, I think they just couldn't afford projectors that could screen it at 48 frames, so only certain theaters could do that, and this theater wasn't one of them. But still, having it filmed at 48 frames, and you can see through the 48 frames, it's... Incredible, just a masterpiece, visually stunning. And it was just great, and it really stayed true to a lot of the Lord of the Rings, too. Which is obviously the point, since it's the prequel to the Lord of the Rings. And the interesting thing is that The Hobbit was written first, before Lord of the Rings. So, you would think it would have been made first, but otherwise it just wasn't. The Lord of the Rings was made first, and now The Hobbit... And in a way, I'm glad, which you would think sounds kind of um, selfish, but um, personally, I'm glad that it came out later because I saw Lord of the Rings before reading the books, and then after reading The Hobbit, then I first saw the trailer for The Hobbit. So I guess you could say it gives some of the, I don't know, new readers like me to get into it before the movie comes out, you know? I think... I'll have been a fan for three years this May. I mean, next May. <sighs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, basically, Hobbit Week, as this has been called, is almost over. <laughs> and ending on a very high note. Finally getting to see the movie after all this time. And hopefully I'll get to see it with a couple of friends a few times. I definitely want to see it at least two more times. Hopefully, next time I can see it with a few friends. So, um, I guess that's just about all I can give for now. I don't want to make this vlog too long, and I don't want to give too many of the details. I want to make sure you can go and see the movie and see a lot of those details for yourself.